The views and opinions expressed in this segment of the Morning SKN are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of the management and staff of Good Morning SKN and Studio 327 Inc. This week's special edition of Good Morning SKN, we are pleased to be speaking with the members of the People's Action Movement, PAM. Good Morning SKN is open to all political parties and hopefully we will be hearing from the other political parties in the Federation in the near future. All parts of society must be included for political systems to be representative. When young people are disenfranchised or disengaged from political processes, a significant portion of the population has little or no voice or influence in decisions that affect group members' lives. The United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Gutierrez, noted in the foreword to the United Nations Youth Strategy, Youth 2030 Progress Report in April of 2022, quote, Today's generation of young people is growing up at a time marked by profound challenges from conflicts and climate change to persistent inequalities, inadequate education, youth unemployment, and the COVID-19 pandemic. But young people are not passively accepting the world as it is. Instead, they are actively taking the lead in changing it as innovators, activists, and voices of progress. Online, in their communities and in the streets, they are championing the values of equity, justice, and international cooperation, and demanding that leaders act now to build a better world for all and protect our planet." End quote. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Delwyn Delaney, PRO of the People's Action Movement, Tamana Wigley, Acting Chair of the Young Pamites, Azard Gums, Deputy Chair of the People's Action Movement, and Camila Morris, Member of the People's Action Movement. Welcome to the special Welcome. edition of Good Morning SKN. We are honored to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Reflecting on the quote we just read from the UN Secretary General, if we accept this to be true, then we might reasonably expect that youth have become increasingly active in politics. In your estimation, is this the case? And if so, why do you think youth have increased their political activity? I think to some extent this has been the case. We are seeing young people involved, but in addition to that, I want to say that young people have always been involved to some extent. If you look at the years gone by with the formation of the People's Action Movement, Sir Kennedy Simmons, Billy Herbert, founding fathers, they were all at that time young people. We are told of the movement being formed and they are around the age of 30. And so Yes, young people are actively involved in politics, but I think young people have been around. The difference is that I think in addition to youth involvement, we have currently more, I, I want to say, older members who are the faces of the political parties, but youth have always been around, or young people have always been around. Well, if I might add to what he's saying, I think the young people understand inclusion. And for that to happen and for it to work, you have to be involved, you have to share your voice. A lot of young people, we are now going forward, you know, in terms of going to school a bit earlier, no longer are we taking time. So you would find that with a lot of opportunities that are available, we are going to school, we are coming back with a wealth, a wealth of knowledge. And now with that wealth of knowledge, we want to share it. And what better way to share it than with the party that you are, you know, want to be involved with, or you want to help them because these are the persons who are going to make decisions for us in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if I may add as well, um, not only have the young people, young persons been around politics, but now we are seeing actually young persons making a valuable impact as it relates to politics. Um, no longer uh, the youth involvement is just on the fringe. But now they are at the seat, uh, the seats of, of the table, making valuable input as well. So then, then when you would say this is an ideal um, political situation for the youths? I, I, I think so. I, I definitely think so because it lends to new ideas, innovative ideas. Um, we are in 2022. What would have transpired, as as Mr. Gums would have said at the, the commencement of the party does not relate to persons now. And so we need the infusion of young minds, young energy, and 
innovative thinking to push the agenda forward. And what we want to do is set the tone and inspire others to join us, you know, because we do need more youth active, active youth members in our um, federation. I will say this also, if we are to look at the People's Action Movement, the People's Action Movement, the national executive, uh, comprises of a number of young people. Our political leader, the Honorable Sean K. Richards, is under 50 years old. We have myself and Delwyn Delaney who are under 50 as well. Um, we are under 40. I wasn't sure. But I wasn't <laughs> sure. <laughs> so under 40, we have our Assistant General Secretary, we have our General Secretary, again, 40 and under. And so when you look at the composition of the National Executive of the People's Action Movement, it is comprised of young people. Mm. Right. So if you could think of an ideal political system that represents the interests of youth, what would that look like? I think that would look like a system where, as we say, young people are actively involved, mm -hmm. a system where young people are not only tokens, but their voices are heard. I think currently in St. and Nevis, that opportunity is there for young people. We see that involvement in political parties is, is there. But you find that some people tend to shy away because of the, uh, the fears of victimization mm. that is also associated, sadly. I, I, what I think would be ideal Although we have young persons at the forefront or uh, within the mix, we have to lean somewhat on our, the experienced ones as well. So we just can't focus on youth-driven, youth-driven, but we must learn from our experiences and those who have been there before. So it's a bit of a balance, but again, the youth element must be um, somewhere at the forefront because, I mean, if we're chanting the way forward, it must be a youth driven um, agenda. And that speaks to the inclusivity that I mentioned earlier because at the end of the day, yes, we want to have youths involved, but we can't just say, you know, we're pushing out persons. The persons who are there, they're there to guide us, train us, mentor us, so that we can have a structure that we want in place and the structure feels, you know, balanced, like Delwyn said. The structure feels like we are moving forward together, not that we're leaving others behind. And I think that's the best way to put it, with everyone involved, everyone at the table, and not just using ideas given, but you're saying, yes, you have a brilliant idea. How about you lead with this? You chatted away with this because it's your idea. I'm here to assist you as well. That's a very important point because I would consider that some young persons might think if they are to be represented by older people, those older people might not necessarily understand what those interests are despite there being opportunities to be heard. So am I hearing you correctly in saying that you think that your party has struck that balance or are you still working towards it? I think that our party is working towards it. I think that there is definitely more room for improvement, but it is working again towards that. Mm -hmm. Well, there's always room for improvement. So. Mm -hmm. Can we, right. we are trying to create the National Youth um, Council, so that is our underworking. So we are, we are represented by a body, and all the decisions that we make, it's legitimate, and it comes from a board. Mm -hmm. well, that's a very good first step, indeed. Now let's have a look at a video that speaks on the importance of youth politics. Unfortunately, the youth of today have been given such a bad name when it is only a minority of people who are creating social disruption. Most youthful people are motivated and long to do well in everything they do, which means they could be a very important aspect in politics. Firstly, young people have different perspectives and a host of different ideas. By allowing them to voice their opinion, we could be opening and moving the political world forward. This is not only good for society, but necessary. If the young did not engage with politics, even if it is through pressure groups, there would be many issues with our political establishments in trying to keep policy fair and sustainable for future generations. For example, equal rights for women required many young women to engage with the issue at hand. Why? Because they had strong feelings for the issue. That is something that we should encourage interest and opinion on political matters. How do we do this? Other than the obvious, reading the news and consulting with your MP, there are plenty of exciting opportunities for the young to get involved. 
Partaking in social organisations such as the Youth Parliament is a prime opportunity for young people to get involved. In the UK, for example, Youth Parliament is open to teenagers who wish to use their voice in creative ways in order to bring about social change. This is both exciting and informative. The development of e-democracy has increased youth interest in politics. Just by listening to this right now, you are engaging and informing yourself with politics, e-democracy. And double congratulations if you are young, because you are doing exactly what you want to be doing, and engage with the most confusing yet important subject in the world. We strongly believe that not enough is done for the young of today to get involved with politics, and as a large portion of our society, they should be allowed more access to politics to shape the world they live in. Thank you for listening, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe, and please do tell us how you get involved with politics. So, is this the same type of political participation that we see from the youth here in the same kits? And are there any differences? Well, I would say it's very similar. I'm surprised that the video highlighted the EU Parliament. Okay. We have the EU Parliament here in St. Nevis. Uh, organization in which we have a number of young people, okay. organization that I have been a part of as well. So only you have been a part of the youth parliament? Anyone else on the panel? No, 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 no we haven't. Not part of it. Okay, well, let's keep them in the hot seat for a little bit longer. <laughs> All right, so someone who has been part of that organization, yes. while you were there as a younger person, uh, to what extent did you feel that your voice was heard? And also, to what extent did you feel that you were given the opportunity to represent the interests of younger people? Well, I started at a very early age, at the age of 14. At that point in time, we were given the opportunity to debate legislation um, that was passed and legislation that would have been passed by the National Assembly. And so I could give you uh, an example where we spoke about the amendments to the road safety legislation and we spoke about the need for seat belts and finding of those persons who are caught without having their seat belts on. And so it gave us an opportunity as young people to add to the conversation to have a voice. Then I came back, I served as president and so I was in a different position where I then assisted young people to have a voice. And so I think the Youth Parliament is an excellent organization to equip young people to ensure that their voice is there and strengthened. And if I can say, if I can add as well, I think it also ensures that the next generation of politicians, <laughs> you know, you have your pickings for yes. that because you're uh, being groomed for that. I would say also to that there are persons now who are contesting the general elections mm -hmm. who would have been, who are former members of the Youth Parliament mm -hmm. Association. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And the side note, I do remember that debate on the seatbelt, so. <laughs> <laughs> So aside from the video, uh, based on your personal interactions, how interested do you believe youth are in politics and why? I think the, the interest is, is gaining momentum okay. as it relates to youth in politics. I, we have seen election by election, we see more involvement in youth. I think the political parties understand that the importance and the role that you would play in determining the outcomes of elections. And we have seen, again, more persons, more young persons being encouraged to get involved in, in politics one way or the other, whether it be at the forefront, whether it be from a strategy standpoint, whether it be from a canvassing standpoint, whether it be from an intel standpoint, marketing standpoint. And you know, politics have all these different arms attached to it. So again, being in politics as a young person doesn't necessarily mean that you're on the forefront with a mic in your hand, mm -hmm. but you're definitely making an impact one way or the other. Mm -hmm. That's a very important point indeed. So I would like to know how each of you got involved in politics and why politics? I'll start with the ladies first. So can <laughs> okay, so basically what would have happened is that in 2020, for sure, I was looking on and I'm saying, you know, I want to be involved. I want to have a voice. Mm -hmm. So I joined the People's Action Movement, you know. I was already a part of it. And then I said, you know what, let me join the mm -hmm. Hamites because I think that's where we would have to start. We're young, so I want to go into there and I want to grow, I want to learn. And that's how I came to be involved in politics. And the question before you ask if there's an interest, and I would say there's an interest, 
and especially in the people's action movement, I think they do facilitate that interest because more so now than ever, more and more young persons are applying to, you know, become candidates. Delwyn did say you don't have to have a microphone in your hand, which is true, but more persons you're seeing when they, do, when they go on the trails, you're seeing more youths. They want to have the mic in their hand as well. They're not shying away. We have um, the Honorable, you know, Sean Richards. He, too, he joined politics at an early age. We have John L. Powell. He joined politics at an early age. Even Natasha Shani Gray. This is all a part of our agenda of pushing young people forward for the People's Action Movement. I was inspired by my grandfather, who, you know, served as Deputy Prime Minister under Kennedy, Dr. Lee, Honorary Wright, Kennedy, sorry. Um, and so last year I heard a voice, I'm, I believe in God and I do pray every day. And everything that I've, I've done, I usually say it's by fulfilling my purpose. And one, one day last year I heard a voice inside that told me that I need to do something and I know I can do something. And, you know, I decided to join um, PAM and politics. All right, great source. Do you have anything to add? No, for me, I, I started out very young. I began mm -hmm. in the Youth Parliament Association at the age of 14. I started from a non political standpoint. I then went to university. I was a member of the Guild of Students, having run a campaign and having been successful. I then came back to St. Kitts and Nevis, served as president of the Youth Parliament, and then um, reached the age of 30, and I was like, okay, then I need to do more. I want to do more. Mm -hmm. I had the family members on both sides of the spectrum, mm -hmm. Labour Party, People's Action Movement. But at the time, I decided that the People's Action Movement was the better of the two, and I felt more comfortable with the People's Action Movement, the accomplishments of the People's Action Movement, what they stood for. I then stood up one time, uh, when they had the National Caucus and was elected the Assistant General Secretary of the People's Action Movement. And I have been a part of the executive from 2019 to now where I am now the Deputy Chair of the party. Congrats. Thank you. All right, so there is growth. I see, you know, the different paths that you've taken, yeah. obviously, to become involved in this organization. Uh, what I do want to ask you now is this. Uh, policy, personality, or political party? How important do you think each of these things is to youth voters? Come on, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to repeat that question just one more time. For me. Sure. Policy, mm -hmm. personality is in the individual personality or charisma of the politician, or political party. How important do you think each of these things is to youth voters? I think all of them are equally important. Mm -hmm. And I say this because policy, it should lead the way, of course. But if we are talking about policies, we have to trust the person who is going to present and say they want to do the policy. So you must trust the politician. And then you must trust the party holistically because you can say you want, you want this policy done, but the party is, you know, one, and they usually have to move together. So you have to have the balance between all three. That's how I view it. Is that the consensus? Yes. Yeah, I think there should be definitely be a balance within all three. And to some extent, too, I think even when we look at it practically, I think sometimes personality of the candidate um, draws persons to a party that they don't traditionally support. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as the one I was saying earlier during the break, we were having a discussion and she yeah. didn't say that. Yeah. So sometimes you have to look at the individual who is contesting as well. Mm -hmm.